got the whole world in your hands. You got the whole wide world in your hands. Here we are once again. This is Bharat from Palmistry Unplugged, and we've been talking about the sat line, which is one of the secondary lines. There's one last thing I want to say about the satin line is when you see that line sign late, that means late development of wealth. Like sometimes you'll see a line that starts in the middle of the palm, palm and then goes upwards. That's talking about late the starting of wealth. Okay, so um, the next uh, situation that we have is um, is the sun line. Now that's any line that's starting somewhere in the palm that goes up and points to the sun line uh, or to the sun or the sun mount is, is considered a line of sun. They're not as common as um, a satin line and it's rare to find one that's a full line like a satin line that you would see like it's a really full straight line that's really going up to the sun and when you do find one of those uh, it does mean, because what is the sun about? It is about creativity, it is about the light, your light, your, your spiritual light, or light, you know, and creativity, which is an offshoot of that. So when there is that strong sun line, which is actually very rare, I don't find it that often, but when I do see it, it does talk about the person being a channel of light, in one way or the other, either artistically or through, through some sort of spiritual thing. Okay, there's something fell here. Let me get uh, something, uh, something spiritual. So, um, so, but you're rare to see it. You'll see more fuzzy type of lines, like just a little bit uh, going up, and you know, in different increments and stuff. Um, so they say that the sun line is more bright or more lucky to have than the sun line, but I've never qualified that. I can never confirm that. It's, it, it does mean there is some sort of channel of light, there is some autistic, artist, and not autistic, artistic channel is there. Especially if the line begins up, uh, like directly above the heart line and moves up, that talks about love of art and beauty and that's usually true. But whether the sun line is a, is a higher line, it's more um, auspicious, I, I can't really say that or not say that. Um, it's good to have it if you have it. It just shows it just shows some channels in there, um, and there's not much more to say about the sun line. In fact, okay. So now we're going to go into the um, line of liver. Now the line of liver, as you'll see in the diagrams, does start in a diagonal way that starts close to the um, to the bottom portion of the lifeline and then travels towards the mercury finger. That's called the line of liver. And liver in classical ancient times just did represent wealth. Uh, and the reason it did represent wealth and mercury represents wealth in business also is because you had, you had to have a healthy body. So the liver, liver has always been associated with health. Because if you have a healthy liver, you have energy to do things, you can get things together. But if your liver is bad, your health is bad, uh, you, you're low energy and you're not, getting, you're not getting your life together, you're not getting your business together. So that's the association with the line of liver and, the, um, and, and wealth, I guess, or the bit they say the line of wealth. There's another line which we'll talk about soon, which I call the line of mercury, which is different than, than the line of liver. The line of liver is associated with your health, and there's two different schools about it. Like, if there is, one school is, if you have a good line of uh, liver, then you have good health. And other people are saying, if you have a good line, strong line of liver, it means it's been past um, health issues that have been there, that have been rectified, uh, supposedly. Uh, so, uh, which is which? So I find that in fact it's both. So, and some people, it means they have strong energy, it's good, it's good for business. And other people means like recurring health issues, health issues they had in the past. It depends on the person you're, you're, you're looking at. So that is sort of the finesse of the reader interpreting what the lines mean or not. So it's not like everything is in a box 
and this means X and this means Y. And, you know, there has to be some sort of flexibility at one person it means this, X, and for another person it means Y. So that, that is something that, that is in, you, have to, you do have to uh, incorporate if you're giving readings, you know. So what I find the most important with the line of liver is when you see very faint liver lines, like very faint there, and then there'd be like a, you know, a cluster of them scattered. So this to me is like a neon sign going, take care of your health, take more care of your health, take more care of your health. Uh, and it's an indication that if the person doesn't do something about their lifestyle and what they're doing, they're, within six months they're going to develop something. Because in the energy body, which this would, let's assume that this is representing the energy body, if things happen six months before they actually happen in the physical body. So, and it's been very true. So I tell the person, because the person say, well, I am being as healthy as I can. And I'll say, well, you have to increase it. You know, whatever you're doing now, it wants more because if you don't do something, something's going to come down. You know, so, and, and the thing about the line of liver is when you see somebody with cancer and you see this red line or a series of red lines like a centimeter thick or, you know, and you, and you, you know, you just immediately know the convinced about the accuracy of this line and what it means. And then to see the same line go when the person goes into remission, <coughs> excuse me, goes into remission, and then you, then you see how that line decreases again. So that was a real eye-opener for me when I saw when somebody had cancer, uh, that, what that looked like, and when they re went into um, uh, recession, that, that what that line looked like. But so the line of liver is there, and there can be more than one line of liver, so there can be all sorts of um, different diseases and stuff like that that people can have. Now there's another situation um, where, um, excuse me, there's, an, there's another situation that happens um, when that line is more perpendicular, more vertical, excuse me, going to the line of Mercury, going to the mouth of Mercury, excuse me. This indicates the line of Mercury. Now this is usually good for business and communication. So this is different than the line of liver. And it took me many years actually to kind of realize that there was a difference. There are some lines that are going straight up vertically, and those are lines of Mercury dealing with business and communication. Uh, and then there's the slanted lines, which are the lines of liver. Okay, so that, that is a differentiation. And then when you have uh, now above lines that are above the hot line and going and, and vertical lines in that mount of mercury, that usually talks about good um, communication skills. So you do look at the mount, you're seeing if the mercury mount is big, if it's a nice bump there, and whether you see lines there, because if there's lines there, that, that, that does talk about um, at good abilities to communicate. Okay, so that's that's the line of Mercury. Um, now, what do I want to discuss? So the next uh, secondary line we could discuss is the girdle of Venus. Now the girdle of Venus is this, uh, as you see in the diagram, is a semicircle that can start like uh, somewhere around Jupiter, in between Jupiter and Saturn, and then arc its way somewhere around the Sun. And that's called the Girdle of Venus. And the Girdle of Venus is actually a secondary heart line. And when it comes into play, it's usually when there's a deficiency in the heart line, like it ending in Saturn. That's when I normally see it. Like somebody who has a full, compassionate heart line, normally I don't see the, um, the, uh, the Girdle of Venus, which I would see it if it goes into the Jupiter Mount. So the person needs to give love and in, in service, but also if they have a Girdle of Venus, that means they, they have to use a different energy. So what the Girdle of Venus means is usually sens sensuality and sexuality. And, but the line could actually be used to go into higher love. But most people, it is about sensuality and sexuality. And if you look at palmistry books from 200 years ago, um, they, they will say, um, this, uh, the person is an nymphomaniac. And I say this is about 
sensuality and sexuality, putting in a person, you know, uh, puts it in a completely different frame of reference. So normally what I see it is when the heart channel is not sufficient enough to carry the heart load, they develop uh, the girdle of Venus. So I mostly see it when there's broken heart lines and when the heart line ends on the satin. And so we'll, it will mean that, you know. Um, and so a person that does have that in, in the Mount of Jupiter, the heart line ending in the Mount of Jupiter, and they have a girdle of Venus, it means you know, there's a component that needs to give love through the profession, but, the profession, but there's another um, channel where they want to express their sexuality and sensuality. Okay, so that's it uh, as far as those secondary lines. And, and um, then, um, I guess the last one which we're, I will talk about is the Ring of Solomon. And that's a semicircle ring that is around um, the Jupiter finger. So when people have that, they don't find it very often. So it could be a complete circle or it could be a partial line. But when people have that, they're usually like the King of Solomon. They can give a wise advice. And the reason they can give wise advice is because it comes from a deeper source. It's not just coming from their ego. So they're able to, to give good advice to people. And I would say that's fairly accurate when somebody has a ring of Solomon. And uh, so, um, the only thing about the Ring of Solomon is the person is not usually able to give good advice for themselves. They can see others, but for themselves it doesn't usually work. Okay, so I will uh, end this now and we will get back into additional lines, special lines in the hand the next time. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Got the whole world in your hands, you got the whole wide world. In your hands, you got the whole.